We're going to look at XUnit testing in C Sharp. We'll create an XUnit test project, write some unit tests, and show you how to use fact and theory. The assert method is an important part of unit testing, and we'll go through some of the different assert methods. The first step is to create an XUnit test project, and we'll do that in Visual Studio. So in Visual Studio 2022, we're going to create a new project. We'll do a search for XUnit, select XUnit test project with C Sharp. We're going to name the project name round the code .xunit. Give the solution name the same. We're going to select .NET 8 long term support. And that's created the project for us. Now that we've created a test project, we need something to test. To do that, we're going to create a class library and write some methods. To create the class library, we're going to right click on the solution, go to add a new project. I'm going to do a search for class library, select the appropriate template. I'm going to call the project name round the code .methods. Select framework.net 8 long term support. We're going to rename this class number helper. I'm going to write some methods in it. To so change the class name, we're going to mark it as static. And the first method that we're going to write is to check whether a number is an odd number. So as part of the parameter, we're going to pass in the number. And then we return the number mod 2 equals 1. That will indicate that it's an odd number. I'm going to do the same for an even number now. I'm going to rename the method as is even number. We're going to do number bod2 equals zero. The other method we're going to do is we're going to do it based on a rating score. So we're going to call the method rating score, pass in the number again, and we're going to do a switch statement. So if we say it's under three, we're going to return a result of bad. If it's equal to three and less than seven, we're going to say that it's okay. If it's bigger or equal to seven and less than 10, we're going to say great. And as a default, we're going to return unknown. Now that we've created some methods, we can test each one in our test project. We first need to add a dependency to our test project to the class library. So we'll add that. Then we're going to add a new class. And this class is going to be called number helper fact tests. This is where we're going to write our tests. The first test that we're going to add, we're going to call the is odd number method. We're going to pass in a value of three as the parameter. We expect that to return true. So we call assert dot true. And we import the number helper method from the round the code dot x unit dot methods. Call the is number method and pass in the value of three. I'm going to do a similar one now. So is odd number value of six. We expect that to return false. So we change the assert method to assert.false and we pass in the parameter as six. So that's the method check in for the is odd number. We're going to do it for the is even number as well. So we're going to rename it is even number, value of three, and that should return false. We expect the assert to return false. So when we pass in number helper dot is even number of three, that will return false. I'm going to do the same for the value of six, but this time we expect that to return true because six is an even number. So we change the assert to true, number helper is even number, change the value to six. Now in order to test it, in Visual Studio we can go to test and test explorer. Notice on the right hand side though that we've got no tests in there. And the reason being is that we need to apply the fact attribute to each one of them. As we add a fact to each of them, we can see on the right hand side that it's updating the test explorer. 
We now have four tests in there. Let's run them and see if they all pass. They are all now passing. We've added our test with one number, but what if we wanted to add multiple numbers to the same test? To show that, we're going to create a new class. And we're going to call it number helper theory tests. We're going to copy and paste the code from the fact tests into the theory tests. I'm going to make some changes. So we're going to change the fact attribute to theory. And what we can do with this is that we can pass in a parameter. So we're going to pass in the number as the parameter. And then up here, we can pass in some data for that parameter. So we're going to do a check for free. So this free will be passed in as a parameter for one of the tests. And we can also add multiple tests by adding multiple inline data attributes. So we're going to do the test for five. I'm going to do the same for seven as well. And we're going to update our tests for each one. So for this, we're going to pass in two, four, and six. Pass in the number parameter, and we need to change the number to the parameter that we're passing in. And we'll do the same for the two at the bottom as well. We're going to pass in three, five, and seven. Pass in the number as the parameter, and then pass it into the method. And we'll do the same for the final one. We're going to pass in two, four, and six. We expect all of them to be an even number. That has now created some additional tests. And notice for each cert method, it contains a separate test. Let's run them and see if they're going to pass. They're all passing for us. We checked whether a value is true or false. But what about other assert functions? Let's take a look. We're going to do some string comparisons on the method that we wrote for rating score. So if we go into number helper fact tests, the first test we're going to do is we're going to check a rating score of seven. So rating score underscore value of seven. We expect that to, equal, to return great. So we can call assert dot equal we expect it to equal great, and we pass in number helper dot rating score as the actual result. We need to mark it as fact, otherwise it won't appear as a test. And we can do the same value of seven, but we don't expect it to equal bad. So it does not equal bad. We can then change the assert from equal to not equal. Pass in the parameter as bad, and we can keep the number helper the same. Our tests are now passing for that. We can also do that with the theory tests. So we're going to write a test. We're going to call it rating score underscore values. I'm going to check the correct rating for each one. So for this test, we're going to pass in two parameters. We're going to pass in a number, and we're also going to pass in the rating. And we can call assert equal. We're going to expect the rating, so that's going to be the rating description. And we'll call the number helper dot rating score method passing in the number parameter. We need to mark it as theory. And we can pass in some data. So we're going to do a couple of tests. The two, we expect that to be bad. For a rating score of five, we expect that to be OK. And for a rating score of nine, we expect that to be great. They're all passing for us. There are a number of other assert methods that you can use in your unit tests. Just call the assert method and have a look through the different methods that you can use for each test. If a test isn't working as it should be, how do we debug? Let's find out. We're going to debug this test in the number helper theory test. We're going to place a breakpoint and we're going to do a search for that test. So we can see it in the number theory tests. It's odd number. What we can do is we can right click and go to debug. 
So when we debug, it's going to stop at any breakpoint. We can see what parameter is being passed in. So we can see a parameter has been passed in of seven there, another one of five, and another one of three. So that's how you debug a test. So that's a tutorial on how to use XUnit. Watch this video next to learn more about XUnit. It's important to know much about XUnit and test your code thoroughly to stop bugs creeping up inside your project.